Uh, I did. Recording. Is it recording? Yep. Yeah, it said that we were recording. Okay. We're good. All right. All right. Let's go. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Miller. Some of you know me, some of you may not. Welcome to my studio. We're going to give you a, a quick tour, and then we'll come back and go through some of the work that I've made. I'm going to try to do that in chronological order. So, uh, we'll start right here. This is where I shoot photography. I have two of these lights, which are really nice and bright. And I use a Nikon D80 with a really nice macro lens. Um, sometimes I do have to use my step stool here and my head will be in the rafters <laughs> to get high enough. And oftentimes I'll shoot on the floor. I'm not great at it, but I know we're all talking about trying to share some things with how we do photos. Um, I, I mean, these, I think were 150. I mean, it's so worth it. Never have to use those clamp lights again. Um, and over here, I use a pegboard for a lot of my storage of my hammers and things like that. I love putting my spools of wire on a peg. It's all organized and lovely. <laughs> this is my bench. And let's see. I got my bench um, from Rio Grande several years ago and have slowly just uh, decorated it with stickers. I, I put on my cappy handles, things that I like. One of my favorite things that I did is we put a board extension on this side so I can have my water and a coat hanger wire to put all my pliers on and extra steel blocks and then the pickle up here on a shelf. So I don't have to have all that crowded on my bench. Um, I also do love using the GRS system where I use a bench pin and then I have the ring holder that goes on here that I left upstairs because I worked at uh, jewelry repair today. And just your simple blocks that you guys probably have. And you gotta have your plant friends around and your photos and all that jazz. <clears throat> I like to use acetylene on some things, and then I use my oxygen propane setup with my mini torch. So it just depends on what I'm doing. This is a little storage system that I think I got on Amazon. But I often, I'm a big recycler. So I'll save these yogurt cups and I'll put parts that I've made. Like every drawer has mm -hmm. tons of parts and uh, things that, well, those aren't as organized, but. So I can just go in there if I'm having a hard day, getting inspiration and pick out some parts. Um, more plants and fun stuff. Working area to hang uh, different necklaces and things that I'm thinking about. Books, all the bookshelves. Um, this is kind of like my little inspiration shelf that I've got um, with my favorite rocks and old family members. These were, my grandpa's shoes that were bronze. Oh. Um, things from when I was a kid. And they're just all the books. And we picked up this little thing. This is from Harbor Freight. And then we went to Depot and got double rounds and put them together. So it's pretty darn sturdy. And I keep like my jump ring maker and extra mandrels and, and things like that under there. And this is usually totally covered, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take you. Uh, oh, we've got this as a small closet. I don't know if somebody asks, I'll show you, but you really don't want to look in there because. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. Beer can collection. Uh, <laughs> this is a cool estate sale find again, a hot mess. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't organize certain things. Um, all my watch batteries, uh, metals, metals. And like, you know, you guys all use these great things for, for beads and findings and all that stuff. I've got a lot of different stuff in my shelves. I started taking my recycled jars and cutting, pre-cutting strips and putting my gauge on there. So I think that's a fair organization area. Uh, okay, this is just art. We'll go in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> so that is my main area and then um this is like 
our, our slap sink pretty much. Yeah, I have one more light I can turn on. And over here, I've got my ultrasonic that I use. And this is a little baby steamer. I got this for 50 bucks. So it's really worth it if you do a lot of polishing. Um, this stuff sticks so, so it's, it's oily and weird. So I can go in here and then spray it off. And um, just my containers and the Oh, I bought a potter's meal from Craft Alliance, so I'm trying to be a potter now. Oh. So, <laughs> um, here is my kiln area. We picked up this hood at the ReStore for $10. So I just turn on the, the fan, and that's the light. And my Vichella, Vichella or Vichella? I never know. A little kiln, so I do all my enameling. Um, Enamels. We're a new enameling bench here. I got this big tray that comes out, and all these great drawers and things for storage. Um, my brand new easel. Brand new easel I just got for me a space sale, <laughs> which I love. Um, printer area. Polishing machine. In fact, we picked this up during COVID just to get even more organized. COVID's been good for our house. <laughs> I was telling my husband, like, we've got a lot of good things done. This is my hydraulic press. It's a Potter USA press. So I use that quite often. And then I have a, a ring sizer that I still need to bolt down. You can shrink the rings or size them up. And my rolling mill, which is very lovely to have. Um, are there any questions on that part? Looks like fun. <laughs> I don't know what, I was like. what are you working on now? Oh. That you can show us or <laughs> sorry. I'm kind of in between stuff right now. I've been doing some some repairs lately and things like that. Um, the piece I just finished is going to a show at the airport through Craft Alliance. It's a faculty art show. And it's a little yeah. <laughs> enameled toilet paper roll that oh, is on a, it's in a embroidered, yeah. embroidered and did felting. And the, the brooch lives on that wall art, and then you can take it off and wear it. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of the art being out of the box. Um, I would show you guys my powder coating booth, but right now it's shut down because we're in the process of talking with an architect and uh, hopefully rebuilding our garage with a loft and a second bathroom. <laughs> wow. Yay. Nice. Um, I mean, other than that, you know, get the potter's wheel. I do all this sewing now. I love um, wood burning now. I want to show you guys some of that stuff. And I paint, you know, just an all around artist, honestly. Um, Kelly, let's see some close-ups of your work on your bench there and on your bus. Okay. Here, I, I put most of the enameling work here on the enamel table. This is a piece I did in grad school. It's actually broken. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it broke. Uh, We've all got broken pieces. Yeah, you know. <laughs> this is a blow dryer brooch. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> This is enamel, powder coat, a real cord, and this is not faux bone, but it's um, some type of plastic I picked up. It's a lot like faux bone. Wow. Cool. This is a ring that's enameled and constructed and powder coated. It's an apple with the foam on the back, which I'll talk about. So you can just put it on your finger. <laughs> Wow. And apple to keep the doctor away. <laughs> Lemon lime brooches. So these are enameled. Um, this is enamel with powder coat. And then it's a type of a lace pattern. So like doing stuff like that, I, I took a whole bunch of doilies I got at Goodwill. And I would photocopy them and then use tracing paper to draw, use that as inspiration, but actually change it. So that this doesn't look just like the lace, right? But you know it's a lace type pattern. Um, this piece had a chain and I took it apart. Let's see. This one's called Consumption. 
I'm really into a lot of those pop art and ordinary object ideas. Is the lighting okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks good. Um, can, oh, this one's called Compulsive Eat It Up. But this one was <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> This little guy, this is an armband. So it's almost tattoo like, you know, when you put it on. This is enameled. This is faux bone, uh, powder coated construction. And this part is powder coated. Uh, corn fuel for life. <laughs> mm. A lot of you have seen my broccoli and garlic rings. But if you haven't, this is a little garlic faux bone. I do a lot of layering, I guess. I like rivets a lot too. My students think I'm crazy. I'm like, I love a rivet. What are you talking about? Why are you <laughs> troubled with that? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Broccoli. <laughs> and then I think I've got some spacing. Ooh. Holly, what are your what are your pieces retail for? Like the garlic ring. Oh. Well, so I just had to get this guy back from Craft Alliance. <laughs> These are the kind of pieces that sell usually, right? This is like, and they're gonna take half of my money. So I had this in there for 850. Okay. It's our, okay, so it's etched, it's Jason Repizade to get all the like real good bumps. Yep. And, and then enameled and all this is fabricated. And there's two mm. layers and powder coated. You, know, you guys understand. Of course. A mimicking design underneath. So it's that, really hard on that kind of thing. You have to find your audience. Yep. I have to find my my audience and my uh, demographic. And it, I yes. Someone like me, but someone like me who enjoys this kind of stuff doesn't really have eight hundred fifty dollars to drop on a cool piece of art. So. <laughs> um, yeah. point, I was just telling a girl at work. At some point every year, I'll just like give some stuff away to friends. I'm like just wear it just put it out there tell them i made it mm -hmm. whatever that's right and so this is a turkey i was really into these cage things <laughs> oh what a turkey so just a faux bone and enamel and etching and chasing a repose you know maybe i should wear this one the rest of the night you should yeah. I like yes kelly we want you, you to you might reach out to the Seattle area because they're really, um, I, I think, a little more avant-garde and um, I, and appreciative of your artwork. I, it might be a place you could check out. Okay. Yeah. And I actually got to visit there once and, and just loved it. Yeah. So, yeah, but I know we're all told you should make these one-of-a-kind works and then make small production pieces based on it. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these bigger, stronger pieces were like humorous jokes in grad school, like, you know, and, and then I got to where I'm like, oh, I can't. not everyone's going to be a, a banger or whatever, a hit. Um, so I'll just go off and do something else. But yeah, so this, the UPS broke. Anyhow, I started getting into these sort of, um, can you see it? Yep. Mm -hmm. a little bit. Here we go. There you go. There so it's know. a medical illustration. Oh. Woman oh. doing jaw exercises. And there's a lot of yeah, detail work. And then again with the surprise back with the foam and stuff. It's really fun. And this went on a painting that's upstairs. And of course we have to sell things. So I get into some of this production work. These are some more like production type different enamels they've done. I'm trying to still work with this foam and get it mixed in with the enamel. So this is the squishy foam. And the rest is glass and silver powder coated. I was doing a lot of these powder coated roses for a while, giant statement pieces. Some of you were at one of our art shows where I actually sold this or one like it, and then the girl changed her mind. And I was like, that's okay. <laughs> How are you? Gosh. Okay, I've got more work in here to show you. I grew this garlic. This is my work as well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant garlics. Yum, yum, yum. I get Whoa. the <laughs> Oh, we should go back to the beginning, I guess. 
<clears throat> so I went to um, Savannah College of Art and Design for 3D animation because I fell in love with toys. Wow. Nice. Did that, they have um, that semester's there, unless we've changed. They have three, uh, I think it's nine weeks and get a break, three terms, they would call it. And I did two terms. I took intro to video, intro to animation, all this stuff. And I hated it. I sat through the computer, my eyes would run and water. I, you know, all the Photoshop and Illustrator. And I just, so I switched the medals because I had taken sculpture in a, in, uh, what do you call that? When I got my associate's degree, community college. One of those. <laughs> yeah. So they said, oh, it looks like you'd be okay with this. So over here is some of my, uh, like these are electroformed vessels that I made. This one has a lid that comes off. And this is called Secret and Confession. I was really young at the time. I got married when I was 21, divorced by the time I was 25. Um, so I was working through, I finally, that's the first time in my life I figured out how to use my art to help my emotions and my brain, you know, like get through it all. Um, so I sold a couple of the pieces and probably a few got dismantled because silver was so cheap back then. Minus this beading, this is the first piece of jewelry I ever made. Oh, wow. Class. Yeah. It was just piercing and layers. And they said, yeah, you'll be okay. I never knew how to do it. <laughs> but but she was really impressed with like my graphic ability. So yeah. all my love of 2D art really, mm -hmm. I think helps my, mm -hmm. well, it's almost 2D, honestly. <laughs> but I, went a painter and I knew I wouldn't make a living there. So uh, <laughs> after, after Savannah College of Art Design, I got a bench jeweler job full time. And I started playing with still fabrication that I knew but setting a lot more stones and a lot of high polished items. So this is, you know, this is ladder ring. Mm -hmm. um, and then like the matching bracelet. Wow. wow. And trying to learn to love casting. I never did love it, but a little <laughs> bit of gold and silver. Ooh. And just, you know, big, crazy etching stuff. This is another, when I pulled this out of the box, it had a tag that said $50. Like, I just mm. wanted to give it away. Like, well, that's a little cheap. But yeah. I was like, I, I need to get rid of some of this stuff. Hey, Kelly. Yes. Genevieve, would you zoom back in on the bracelet that has the little boxes on it? That The other one, the first one, please. And have Nancy zoom in on it for me. Yeah. Start talking. There we go. That's wonderful. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. Brass, uh, some brass, copper, and sterling tubing, and then there's some rubies and um, sapphires in there. Put it on, please. Um, okay, now back up a little, Nancy. Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. I wore to a wedding and dropped it on concrete. I thought I was going to vomit. So that was <laughs> <laughs> I fell right off my freaking arm. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's great. That's really great. And what, Kelly, so you, what did you electroform over on your sculptural pieces? Wax. Wax. Oh okay. mm. And what kind yes. of sculpture so, did you um, Wax. These guys, I made a I carved it out of uh, MDF or something okay. and then made a vulcanized mold and then injected every one of these with wax and attached it to the body. Okay. So the bodies are actually fairly similar. They might be the same body and I just adjusted them. And then this one's patina and colored pencil and just patina. I think this one's been dropped once or twice too, unfortunately. <laughs> don't don't tell anybody that. That looks like it's just part of it. It's yeah. supposed to be that way. I mean, they're so old at this point. <laughs> oh, and then over here, so okay. Then I was a bench jeweler, right? In between when I was making all these uh, shiny things. And I decided that that wasn't something I wanted to do my whole life. Um, oh. I applied to graduate school and got a really great scholarship that I couldn't pass up on. So in 2009, I went to SIUE for graduate school and started right away again with uh, 
things that I knew about. Let me turn this light on. So there's a lot here, but I guess focus up on these. These are pewter and they're salt and pepper shakers. This came from a friend oh, Oh, wow. Those are lovely. Ouch. Oops. So I set stones in them. I did all this crazy mm. stuff. <clears throat> so fun to use pewter because you could actually hold it in your hand while you soldered mm -hmm. oh, wow. but i started with a you know i really have this love of polka dots and this might be one of the first pieces i really now that i think about it used my polka dots with and i learned in school how important it is to have a nice stand mm -hmm. for your items if it's more of an art piece so you can display it and then i uh, quickly started falling in love with pin and the imagery so these are a few examples of riveting and you pierce out all the different pieces from different tins, found cookie tins or biscuit tins and rivet those together. This one I really want to repair. Do you, do you see his nipples? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. So I started really just having fun, but for some reason I decided to make this out of fine silver and enamel it. I didn't know about powder coating yet. Hmm. so. I took the whole freaking thing apart, but I started playing with leather too, which that's what I wanted to show you guys upstairs. So foam bone, right? And then you got the little cool beer can guy with his nipples, <laughs> having a great time. And like this, oh my gosh, Pat Line Low. And you see like, so it's etched and they're like blowing. She's from a beer can. I used to just giggle, Pat Line Low. And this is foam bone etched copper and that little brooch not not the success successful but i still really like her uh so tin was fun and then i started experimenting with like color quite a bit so these this is engraved plexiglass um with paint in it and if you look at the side i just practiced with these rivets making different sorts of curly structures and this is the ring part um, but it's you know color on metal just colored pencil and um textures and where's my other one i guess i didn't have that out well there's a third one to this series published in a book and i think it's at the gallery in texas but spray paint and little enamel pieces and just just their studies honestly but, um, um, <clears throat> How did you make the stands? Hmm? How do you make the stands? Oh. What are those made out? Tell me about those. Oh, here's the bottom. That's real attractive. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Dowel rod. And you use a spade bit. I think these are half inch. And you just drill your hole and glue your dowel rod in and paint it. Spray paint it. Okay. This one is a Delrin or acrylic. It was a lot harder. If you can see the glossy shine on it. Mm -hmm. Colette Myers said, this is how you're going to do it. And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> now I do wood. <laughs> um, so the first summer of graduate school, uh, after having color on metal and learning about the tin and everything, I went to Tinland and studied under Phil Renato, who introduced me to this foam. It's a two-part foam from Smooth On. And I went crazy. I know some of you guys the enamel work has some of the foam, foam. I've been working with that for like 10 years, trying to figure out how to really get into jewelry. But also in graduate school, I made corn dogs. This is all foam. <laughs> and like a Coke and, and squeeze it. Oh, I love it. It's sort of like these little lollipop, you know, and they're all in sprinkles. Uh, I got really crazy with some wild, weird brooches. This ginormous well, it's a study but talking about fashion and stuff and like this one is a ring <laughs> yeah, I guess it's like this looks like mustard and ketchup threw up on you <laughs> <laughs> this is the first piece I made with the foam I should have cleaned it up more but I tried to be really traditional and, and do a bezel and like a, a CZ and all that stuff and it's a brooch with some netting there. Wow and then I made these little petty fours. So these are copper that are powder coated and then the foam. And then these, I love more petty fours. So I made a mold out of uh, 
Umu, which is another material. You can buy it smooth on. And uh, let me do how to play. I can't remember how I made the first one. I'll have to get back to you on that. But um, then I could basically cast these with the foam. And then this part is aluminum foil that I used one of those hole punch things to get the design and I powder coated the aluminum foil. Wow. And it's heavy enough to withstand? Yeah. I found one in the drawer that was cracked, but, and then I put little sprinkles and so I'd make this part first and then I'd go back and just like a cake decorator would, honestly, and squeeze yeah. on the parts. And um, I had all these and all over my grad show with the three uh, glass cake tier things. And people could just, oh, I'll take that one and they buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Food plays big in your work. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I think gardening as some kind of inspiration, but Ooh. my parents gardened. So, you know, they instilled the strong work, work ethic and the gardening. I think when I had Oliver, food became more important as well. Um, so I'm still playing with the foam and the faux bone and leather and some sewing. Oh, acrylite. Yes. A lot of you saw this piece at Craft Alliance. I think this has the foam, the powder coat. Sterling, all the things. The acrylite is a, it's like a plexiglass kind of, but it comes in these amazing colors. And so there's a little powder coated piece behind there. And I, yes, my earrings are acrylite. So it's a thermoformable plastic, like faux bone is. There's fun little rings, but then I'll still go back to like, Okay, I'm gonna do some stones. So, <clears throat> you know, I like Drew V. I'm sort of all over. I had some of these at the last show, so this is, I like really industrial looking things too. This is a powder coated shape with some aluminum, aluminum grid, um, some hot pink foam and some rivets. And this foam has a pot life of 60 seconds. So I literally weigh these things out in little cups and add the colorant and stir it. And when I mix the two together, I've got to know exactly what I'm doing, where I'm pouring it, what I'm casting it on, or it'll get hard. And what, let me grab the box. You don't have to, okay. Here's one of the kinds. The different numbers behind it will tell you how much expansion you get. So you can mm. get up to 10 times expansion. Wow. wow. But as fun as this kind of art is, it's hard to sell because people think it's trash or costume or so I'm just trying to bring it up if I can. It was. <laughs> um, I guess most recently I'm working on some wood type things. I was lucky enough to get to take a class at Craft Alliance and I wood turning. I made my first platter and bowl. We did like a cutie stick and a mushroom, silly thing. So then I started doing, if anybody follows me on Instagram, here's some on the wall. Hopefully that lighting's good. So I kind of went back to grad school in my head and looked at clip art and um, again, putting jewelry on the pieces. So you can hang it on your wall, you can wear this brooch out. And when you come home, you can just simply pop it back in there. <laughs> Oh, I love those. I've seen your work on Instagram. And then I use a lot of colored pencil and gold foil. So the prep work is almost as much time as the actual wood burning because I take the images, I photocopy, I resize, I have to create my composition. Um, that's really fun. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you getting tired? It's been a while, but fascinating. <laughs> Actually, it's six oh four. Nice. Okay. Um. That's good. Inspiration. Inspiration is uh, a lot of Claus Oldenburg, Roy Lichtenstein, pop art, vintage ads, um, info commercials. Oh. I mean, there's a lot of humor in my work. So things, I, I see them as ridiculous. I want to kind of make a comment or make fun of it in my own. <laughs> um, color. 
look at this. You know, when we get stuff, we know where to send where to send it to you. Send what to me? Well, if we run across any vintage stuff. Oh, you should see all my tins. I have like three or four huge Rubbermaid containers of tins. Oh, I never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a tin. <laughs> to make stories. I guess I really do like narrative work. I'll get really into a piece like that, and then maybe the production work relaxes my brain because it's not as important it is but it's not and uh the, i did the art fair circuit a little bit i never got too crazy into it um it was so much work i was always by myself it was very hot and i wouldn't even make my booth be half the time mm -hmm. and i don't push people so yeah. i've decided that galleries are more for me it's okay i pay them to sell my work they take a percentage mm -hmm. Where um, where all do you have your work? I have my work in Craft Alliance in um, Equinox Gallery in San Antonio, Texas, uh, and some local places around here. It wasn't the contemporary, but it was more production stuff. But uh, they were changing shop people, so I'm not in there currently. Um, they're about to put it out at Lordo's Diamonds. I guess those are the main two galleries to tell you the truth. I keep wanting to go out to Chicago or L I know some of this stuff probably would sell in New York and LA and Chicago, yeah. but I don't know. You know, I've applied to some of the other main galleries that we all know, names, I don't know, Mora. No response. I'm part this is a funny market though. I'm not I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm still learning about how to maybe get the best photos or the best approach or the best collection, that kind of thing. I think the work is there, it's strong, but you know, do I want to be a slave to the same object I have to do over and over? I bounce around so much, it's really hard. <laughs> well, you know what? I've I've um, had that issue too with being on Artful Home, and what um, I've just got a lot of different things that I make over, so it isn't horribly boring for me. Yeah. You know, I, you know, it's oh, okay, I'm doing this one again, but it's like three months from the last time. So it's not horrible. Yeah. Well, and Kelly, I, wouldn't you yeah. consider going to Artful Home? I mean, I think your stuff would be great. Yeah. On Artful Home. I agree. I agree. Why? All they can do is say no. That's true. If they have an option where it really could be one of a kind, I'd prefer that, like a similar, like, with the torch fire, when I do some of these, I didn't put out any one piece of the enameling that I do little gold foil polka dots. So I like roll print it and then I um, torch fire it with a white enamel. You know, sometimes I'll actually put robin's egg down first, then I'll sand mm -hmm. it off and then torch fire it and just do all these things. And like a humid day, it works. I, I appreciate the results more in a non humid day, it's a little different, but every one is technically one of a kind. It might look similar. That's something I always have to look into. Yeah. Well, Artful Home takes both one of a kind and production. So you're good. All right. I'll look into it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. My 14th job. <laughs> <laughs> Your work is just so creative and unique and That's fascinating. Fun. Really. Lots of fun. It is fun. Um, oh, some of your vegetable tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, of your tattoos. <laughs> broccoli. Broccoli. There we go. This is supposed to be a Brussels sprout. He looks a little bit like lettuce. This is avocado. <laughs> this is the avocado. Very good. <laughs> my spinach Wait. happened after I was on a reality show. Do I have a little pamphlet I can show you? I think everybody knows that, but. Who will be the next rock star designer? My channel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when was that? 2015? Wow, it's that long ago. I can't believe it. I know. Right? They sent me a DVD and everything. They keep saying they're going to do a second season, but I don't know what's going on down there. Um, COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. COVID. <laughs> Funding. <laughs> Going on, but, um, I don't know. I said, just bring me back as a judge or something. 
I was certainly the most they went with somebody who was more on trend um, and I now despise tassel earrings I mm -hmm, want to rip them mm -hmm. off everyone's head when I see them kind of earrings tassel oh yes <laughs> Uh, of course, look at me. I can't say that. I, I do a lot of unique materials, but uh, she was just more traditional, and that's what they were looking for. So you never know on those reality shows, you know. That's interesting because I would you think they to expand things. How do you get involved with that? Who knows? I heard about it through a group I'm juried into called Etsy Metal. Um, we have a Facebook group, Etsy Metal Chat, and someone posted it on there. I said, oh, okay, I have to, I'll have to apply. And um, we had to get so many votes. I had all my friends and family, and I picked up like an extra two email, <laughs> email accounts, and you had to email them every day and vote. How fun. So whether I really got one of the top five things that way, or they just said, she looks interesting, I'll never know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I do have an Etsy shop. I used to spend a lot of money on advertising and things like that on Etsy, and it never got me very far. Mm. Um, best thing I ever sold on there, or the most often I should say, were my enamel light switch plate covers. But I haven't had a sale in over a year because I haven't been putting the energy into it. You know, they went public and they have things made in China that they sell mm. on there. And it's just, I don't think it's for the handmade artist like it used to be. No, nope. mm. it is not. Mm. It's just a sales venue. <laughs> yeah, <But> that's you. <laughs> they want the money. I think word of mouth is really good. I think, I think everything good about Craft Alliance. I mean, I some of those guys follow like Stephanie Kirkland follows my Instagram account, and she's seen these wood burnings. She said, "I want those at the new shop. Mm -hmm. We're going to mm -hmm. expand, so I need to get yeah. on more of these things." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So maybe I can sell them for more than fifty dollars a piece, which is what I've been selling them for. <laughs> That's another yeah, thing. really hard to oh, value. Put the value on your work like you should, because at some point you just want to sell something and make somebody happy. And you, right. I sometimes just give things away. I'm like, it's for you. <laughs> it never hurts. <laughs> and it's a hard time right now, Kelly. It's gonna. It's, it's not just us as artists, it's everything across the board when it comes to just sales, retail, wholesale, whatever. Everybody's gonna be struggling and money's not gonna be there for the types of things that we sell or want to sell. So, you know, find something that makes you happy and, and market it and, you know, be satisfied with that for the moment, but don't stop making the things you love. I mean, I found that to be true for me is, I'm all over the place too. I don't do just one thing all the time anymore. And so I just kind of go with the flow and, and I think that that works. Good, I'm glad I'm not the only one that kind of feels like that. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all there. Yeah. yeah. Person and like a day where I can't get into the studio, um, I'll go garden and maybe I'll get a fresh piece of whatever I grew and make a beautiful dinner. And I feel excited because I'm learning how to cook. So, you know, I'm not. Right. <laughs> I, think, I yeah. think it's so hard that society puts those expectations on us or you know our our parents as we grew up how they expected things to be done and then we follow those expectations and then when you do something like what you just said you you grew your food you prepared it and you made this beautiful meal for your family and that's so satisfying and I think we don't give ourselves enough credit for that. And I think, you know, pat ourselves on the back when we when we do those things and give yourself permission. Yeah. Live your own dream. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> don't live. Congratulate you. <laughs> yeah, I just want to always feel like I accomplished something. I, I just have this constant passion to create. And I, it's okay if it's food or you know oh, of course you sewing machine where i can do embroidery you know mm -hmm. like that so it's okay it's like creativity is kind of like water it just goes in all directions yeah you know where it's going to go in you or anybody else but yeah. that's what's good about it like the neighbor said to my husband you don't let grass grow under your feet do you <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 
We're always busy. <laughs> Why should you? <laughs> yeah. Well, some people are content to sit there, but I don't think it's artists. <laughs> yeah, no. So Kelly, what's your next direction? What are you gonna do tomorrow? Tomorrow I have to go to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they kind of do what you do. <laughs> I really need to go to the dentist. Um, and then I have a friend coming to town. My, well, here's a good story. So we were friends on and off through uh, junior high and high school. We went to the same community college. And one day in Savannah, Georgia, when I was going to SCAD and walking through one of the beautiful squares, and who oh, yeah. square, Shannon, who's now my best friend, like we were always friends, but oh, it was awesome. So she studied architecture, I studied metal smithing. She now lives in Gulf or uh, Mobile, Alabama. And she's coming up this weekend. And yay! Yeah, I've been excited for a month because she was supposed to bring me 10,000 oysters and then she couldn't get them. Oh, 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 oh darn. <laughs> <laughs> Those oysters, whoa. I'm probably trying to do some wood burning this weekend if I get a little time because I want to try to get, I probably have eight or 10 of these, but they're not all the same. So maybe get into some of that. And I really, what's up next is. Seriously, focusing on Maryville and how the semester is going at a Zoom meeting tomorrow. Um, I need to start making videos of all my demonstrations. And once they're done, they're done. I have them. That way I can show the students in person and they can have a log of all these videos to rewatch. Mm. And that helps me in the long run because I don't ask as many questions over and over as well. And since part of the teaching will be virtual, there's a lot of work to do this month to get ready for that. This is well helping Craft Alliance move. Been doing a lot of work packing over there. So. <laughs> yeah, but you'll have those videos for the rest of your life, too. I know. It's just like all those tutorials I wrote, I sell them every day. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to look into some of those places online or if I could like get a few intro videos and be like, mm -hmm. hey, for $10, mm -hmm. you could learn how mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Yeah. Do or I don't, I got to research it, but it could be. Yeah. Um, or for our website. I'm happy to share it for free. It doesn't matter, really. <laughs> it's all the editing I know, you know. It's just, that's what I'm going to be doing. You'll be busy. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm also painting, working part time, painting my dad's rental house. He's going to, he has a, a bad knee, so oh. he's me, but you know, that's some fitting that in here and there. And, well, of course, there's Oliver, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As if you're not busy enough. <laughs> and right. I want to show everybody this really quick. This is something I got on Amazon for about $21. I could send out the link. I know some of you saw it at a meeting we had, but I made some Brussels sprouts the other day and filmed it. And I realized that right where my camera goes was right where I had to chop with a knife. <laughs> so that wasn't going to work. But if I can put it a little different. I got it to make video demos, right? So I think if I sit down at my bench and I'm fairly still, that I could be talking and showing them. Mm, I could definitely show them soldering. Cool. Yeah. So if anybody is interested in making videos, um, I don't know if that's the brand B land, but you can swap it. You can even take it off like this. Mm. They show, you know, I could hang it from something to get a different angle, or I can, if I have room, I can bend it all over and it's kind of cool. Very cool. Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah. Um, I wish I had more good hacks to give you. I didn't know you had. Well, we really appreciate you welcoming us into your yes. home and studio. It was so much fun. I don't think we knew all the things you did. It's so interesting. Yeah. I'm all over the place. You you've kind of, you've inspired me to dig out my wood burning set from when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you the one I have. Oh. Yeah, I wonder if it's the same sort of. I don't know. Mine, mine, like I had it when I was eight or nine years old. Wow. <laughs> and I loved it. I did it a bunch. Oh, yeah. So that's a good question because. But I still have it too. So 
So yeah, I started with a um, wood hollow. Is that what it's called? Walnut hollow. Okay, I had another one. I broke it. I changed the tip so many times in the first like three days of using it, it totally broke. So uh, this one, but it's still also a walnut hollow brand. Well, I bought this as a backup from Walmart. Uh, these are crap, okay? That's not what I use. <laughs> Do you see either one of those? Not anymore because I got myself this bad boy. Ooh. This is a razor tip. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. So, so you mean business. Yes, it's amazing. So here's my car. Let's see what my little tips are. So, so you can really prep. What's that? You can really get some detail with this guy. Oh, oh it's amazing. Details you put on your phone. Okay, now my husband was really against me buying it, and I said, I promise I'll get it paid for. I've already paid for it. Okay, <laughs> good. I, you know, I sold some of those. So you go in here with this. You can, the best thing about this versus this, I can adjust the heat mm. depending mm. on what type of wood I'm using. Now you've got tips that are super fine like this. Oh, wow. Wow. And you can buy all these different little tips. And uh, I mean, it's really, it was a game changer for me. What do those mean, Kelly? Um, I got just like 10 tips, this, and two pens. Because what you can do is got, buy a permanent pen, or you can get the one where you can switch them out. So mm -hmm. that initial investment was $200. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now they have one where you can get more, two of these. And, and there's a lot of different brands, but the razor tip is what I had researched, and it's fantastic. And they sell this wire. It's a special wire. You can make your own tip. Oh, that's cool. Oh, um, wow. But... Most people that seem to do this kind of thing make like a fox or a fish or an owl. So I'm not utilizing it for all its work just yet. Um, I'm shading with the colored pencils and things mostly, unless it's just a, a linear piece like some of these things where I was playing around. This one isn't that Yeah, but good. that makes your work different than theirs. You don't want to be like them. Yeah. <laughs> A sandwich I started so you can get really cute fine details and oh, I use carbon yeah. paper I draw on top of it so you have to you know get your image on there and huh. uh, just curves are really hard so you do have to practice but this is black walnut is that what this is yeah wow so make sure you do your research guys because you don't want to use like poplar there's certain woods that are caustic Mm. And I also have a bunch of skulls that I got from Linda Langford and collected some of my own. And I thought, oh, I could burn on those. That's super duper toxic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely want to do that outside. I started to cry when I thought, this is going to take so long. And I, so I said, I don't think I want to do bone. But mm. this is fun, different kind of hobby. I really enjoy it. I thought, oh, maybe I would turn a bowl and I could burn a design on that. Who knows? Maybe I could burn into the skull bone, actually. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's <my deal> there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was, that's my COVID-19 hobby. Let it pick up. <laughs> yeah, everybody has one. Yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, keep going, Kelly. Keep going? Keep going. All right. No, just in, in general, in life, you're doing great. Yes. <laughs> Well, I can go ahead and say this now. Did anybody get the Craft Alliance email? About a uh, sale? I was. So, I, don't, I didn't see anything. Open that I applied for, so fingers crossed. Um, I would stay at Maryville as well. Mm -hmm. I want both. <laughs> okay. So that'd be a full time, it'd be 30 hours a week or so. So fingers crossed, but it's an open, it's open for whoever wants to open. But I think that'd be really fun. I'd really enjoy working with the artists and the staff. And I love everybody there anyway. So yeah, be cool. They're like another family. <laughs> yep, that's right. So when does Maryville start? In a month or the twenty fourth? Yeah, twenty fourth. Okay. So it's probably yeah. Very, yeah, it's coming up very quickly. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I just got a text from Rebecca. She had to leave because her son was into something he wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> and, and she said it was delightful to see everybody. Good. I look forward to her. Well, Kelly, I wanted to tell you, um, thank you so much for sharing everything. Um, I've got to head out because I have soccer practice as a kid. So, um, yeah. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Okay, sounds good. Bye, Jessica. Bye, Jessica. Bye, Jessica. Bye. Yeah, thank you, Kelly, for showing us your studio. I missed the first part, but I got all the last part, so I really enjoyed seeing it. So oh, thank I haven't you. been to a meeting for a long time, and I just got in on this, so I'm happy to be here. Well, it's okay. recorded. It's being recorded, so um, you can watch the other half once it's posted on the YouTube channel. Oh. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, and sorry about powder coating not being up and going, but maybe we'll do this, we'll keep doing this, and then we'll have like a, maybe we'll do a mini one where I'll show you how and proper and safe. Yeah. You could do a mini uh, demo. Yeah, we'll yeah. do a little demo. With oh. ventilation. Yeah. Uh, totally forgot to show you guys the ventilation here. Oh, yeah, okay. That's what I'm getting is it? Uh -huh. Is it from Amazon? No, I think John got it at like Lowe's. Okay. But somewhere. Yeah. So anyway, this thing, um, you just turn it on. And I had to plug in something on the other side of the basement because unfortunately this tube has to run all the way across. So mm -hmm. it's a little loud, but um, I've got it to where the pipe comes right here, right where it's fire. Mm -hmm. And you can see the flow and it's I feel so much better about that. I know we talked about the other ventilation by the kiln. Um, yeah, it's great. Wow, thank you. I love all the fun colors in your studio. <laughs> the colors? Mm -hmm. It's you. <laughs> yeah. It goes. It goes well with you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I like my color. I like my plants. Good. I don't like macrame, but I decided the only, I can't find hanging baskets anywhere anymore. So I started making these like macrame hangers because <laughs> <It'll come back. laughs> I like this one because it's pink. But <laughs> Here's a little inspiration show. Of my little Oops, so kind of oh, yeah. There's some little guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, here's an example of some of my 2D work. So these are from Info Commercial Magazines oh, and wow. make the brooch come off. So the, I love you get, that. he's getting a haircut and the, the bowl that they sell you goes around your neck and it's this big hideous thing so it catches all the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to go guys. Yeah. Uh, somebody oh, hit a telephone pole out in front of our house just a little bit ago. So, oh no! Yeah. Uh -oh. And so anyway, so it's been exciting. <laughs> Great, Kelly. You look. It's wonderful. Thank you for doing this. No problem. Bye, Bye Lee. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. I'm leaving also as well. Yeah. Kelly, you did a great job. Thank you so much. So now I can go too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. You're doing a great job of being a photographer. Thanks, Kelly. Hi. Thanks, Kelly. Next time I'll see some um, bone necklaces. <laughs> I got them right here. Let's see. There's one. Let's see it. I can't see you. Oh, maybe we turn. I don't know. I can see it. So oh no, that's foam. I mean bone, B O N E. Oh, you mean like faux bone? Yeah. No, I mean like real bone from those deer antlers. Oh, well, here's one of them hanging here, drying. <laughs> oh my gosh, it had so much skin and grossness on it. Like, <laughs> but um, I painted a couple and I gave one to my niece. She adored it, and then one's in my kitchen. 
Um, oh my God. One of the half ones I cut up for dog toys because those antlers, they love those. Mm -hmm. They do. Um, I don't know how to get this back on my face, but that's okay. Okay, I got you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, we'll I gotta go. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Nancy. Bye. All right. I think we're we're gonna we're gonna go. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Okay, bye everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for doing that. No problem. All right, I'll try to get this up on YouTube tomorrow. And so oh, wow. else wants to volunteer for uh, September. We're we're open. She's working on a brand new studio, so she might be ready in a few months or something. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Lizette? Nancy Pearson? Oh, yeah.